When you first discover baseball, when you're given your first love, you find out at a tender age what it's like to fall in love. You learn to play, you learn the rules, what the game's about. There are three outs to an inning, it's three strikes and you're out. When first you see a big league park, those stands, that field of green, you know as long as you shall live, you won't forget that scene. So you root for the old home team, the favorite player choose. You learn life's hardest lesson. There are lots of times you lose. Then you realize your parents and your grandfather, too, all have this in common. They love it just like you. And seven decades down the road, that love is still the same. For all the memories you have, what counts is the next game. For your whole life, it's part of you. Its praises must be sung. For to be in love with baseball is to be forever young. We were at the, uh, oh, the yeah. first session. We had the 1975 session. Someone asked me to repeat uh, why I'm so confident about uh, the 2015 season. And I'll tell you, you better watch out because this is no lie. The Red Sox are back. I'm telling you why Sandoval is coming. <laughs> 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 you play your third base. 
He'll be in first place. He's such a big star with such a big waist. So he's <laughs> coming to town. The panda bears on our side and Lee Ramirez too. If other teams say they're the best, we will simply say Kung Fu. <laughs> oh, he's got a great club. He's got a great bat. You gotta admit, the guy's really fabulous. <laughs> and the is coming to town. One, on, uh, one of the great old Red Sox players, Carl Yastrzemski, he wore number eight. In the field of that bat, my God, he was great. For 23 years he carried the load. A player like that deserves his own ode. But here is the rub. Yastrzemski won't rhyme with any word I have been able to find. <laughs> I've lain awake nights, I've done the research. I can't find a rhyme, I am left in the lurch. There just is no word to rhyme with Yastrzemski. And take that from one who has made the Yatemski. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be shameless to do this stuff, but it helps a lot. Start carving the statue, get the site ready, right on the sidewalk between Yaz and Teddy. He's king of clutch hitters, fit him for the crown. Get driving instructions to old Cooperstown. He'll, he's our Hall of Famer, he'll get there with ease. The Pope will proclaim him St. David Ortiz. <laughs> to us, he's Big Poppy, we love it that way. The Big Pop's in his bat when he saves the day. Other teams fear him from east to west coast. He launches those big bombs when it matters most. On the day that he is installed in the hall, Sox Nation will be there, his fans one and all. And when that hall plaque is put into his reach, we pray that he'll launch no F-bombs in this beach. <laughs> On his final at bat in the major leagues, hit a home run. One of the one of the great grand moments in baseball history. Only 10,454 people in the park that day. And a guy came up to me at the end of last season. He said, "You know, I was here in the park the day that Ted hit that home run, his final at bat." I said, "Isn't that interesting? Because that makes you." the one millionth person who has claimed to be in the park. And it raises a few questions. We are here the day of Ted's last blast. We are part of his supporting cast. We are fully grown or just a tyke. We are sitting next to John Updike. A million people say they were, but the numbers don't concur. There were just 10,000 in the stands, whooping, cheering, clapping hands. Are you sure you're right to make such claims or read your memory playing games? Some of their mother's grave have spawned, even though they weren't yet born. A million fans, bless you, were there. That's more than showed up all that year. Perhaps you're fudging just a bit. In fact, I think you're full of sheer admiration. <laughs> and all his accomplishments uh, over the years. Uh, let me just finish up with... Uh, a little one that, uh, that I like because it mentions so many of the great players in Red Sox history and it talks about Red Sox history. So it's a little thing I did for the uh, 100th anniversary of the ballpark. More than a hundred years she stood here. Her cheering, seen our tears through all the good times and the bad. Fenway perseveres. She's baseball's great crown jewel, a treasure. This is why. Look out there on that field, you see the ghosts of games gone by. There's Babe Ruth standing on the mound, Ted Williams at the plate. Someone's great-grandfather just came in through the gate. That's Yaz patrolling in left field and center, Freddie Lynn. Cronin's playing shortstop, but Pesky's coming in. Louis Tiant whirls and spins, and then he lets it go. And there's another leaping catch by Dom DiMaggio. Jim Rice lines one off the wall. Malzone comes in to score. Pedroia makes a diving stop. Or is that Bobby Dore? <laughs> Misk hits one deep into the night. Will it be foul or fair? It carries off that foul pole, and the cheers still fill the air. 
Dilly Evans, rifle arm, just cut a runner down. There's Tony C, still young and strong, the toast of his hometown. Robert steals another base, pinch running from Milano. There's Longmore, Braddock, Jimmy Fox, and Pedro, and Nomar. Look closely. You can see them all. They come here every day. Fenway was and is their home. It's where her ghosts still play. And in the dugout by first base, this is the current squad. Someday they will take their place with all the Fenway gods. That's why that place is magic, why she's made such a mark. She's a hundred plus and going strong. And long live Fenway Park. That's here for Dick Flavin, everybody. competing today. First we will welcome the Red Sox Legends team. To my left we have Psycho Steve Lyons. Bill Lee is in the house. Jim Longboard. And Sam Horn. Representing the 2015 Red Sox players. We welcome back Justin Masterson. Brock Holt. Darren Cipini. And we welcome back Hanley Ramirez. All right, before we begin, let's do a little refresher on how the game is played, which I certainly need, and you'll find out I will need as this game goes on. Each team will compete against each other and name the most popular responses to a survey question. For example, we surveyed 100 people and asked them to name the most famous George. Your answer might be George Washington or George Clooney. We start with a face-off to see who will gain control of that particular question. Whoever guesses the more popular answer in the survey plays the round. You can choose to pass or play at that point. Team gets a strike. If your answer is not on the board, three strikes will give the opposing team a chance to steal and win the points you might or might not remember. Uh, there'll be one final triple point round. The team with the most points at the end wins. One final vote. We're gonna try to keep this as clean as possible. There are a lot of kids here, so I wanna keep that in mind. For Psycho, Billy, and others. No, well, it's all baseball, actually. It is all baseball, it's all Red Sox for the most part. Well, no, 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 that was just, that was just kind of an example. No George. <laughs> 